Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord this morning. And we honor the presence of the Lord God Almighty. Our God who is good, our God who is great, and our God who is worthy of all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Good morning, God's people. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. And we pray that you have already invited the Spirit of the Lord into your presence this morning. But we echo the word of the Lord, which declares that in his presence is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. We honor our pastors this morning, even in their absence, our Bishop Gregory Dennis, and our Pastor Tanya Dennis. We are continuing to keep up their, their family, amen, and the McClure family in our prayers this morning. And we ask that you continue to uphold them and undergird them. I'm going to get right into the word of the Lord this morning um, because the Lord has deposited a word into my spirit, and I pray that you have an ear to hear what I believe the Spirit of the Lord would say to us on this morning. So I have a few scriptures, um, and I'm really only reading them to set a foundation for what I ultimately believe is just what the Lord wants to say. So I, of course, will not have time in the short time that we have to go through all of them in depth, but I need to lay a foundation and then declare what I heard. First scripture I want to read comes out of the book of Joshua, beginning in the first chapter, verses 1 through 7. And it reads, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land, which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. I'm actually going to stop there because I want to highlight verse 2, which says, Now therefore arise. Next scripture comes from 1 Kings 19th chapter, verses 1 through 5. And I will read all five of these verses because I think if I should park anywhere this morning, it will be here. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die and said, Is it enough now? O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, the angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. I actually think I'm going to stop there. The other two scriptures I was going to read um, are in the New Testament. One of them is found in John 5, verses 1 through 8. The other is in Luke 15, verses, uh, just verse 16. And if you have time on your time, I would ask you to go read those scriptures. But I want to share with you what I heard from the Lord tonight. And again, we'll use this scripture in Kings as our backdrop. And I want to talk to you this morning about not getting stuck in transition. The word of the Lord this morning is to arise and go forward. Amen? Arise and go forward. We have heard echoed we're living <laughs> in a season of transition. We are in this place, and it has been heralded across the nation. It's been heralded in every message that we're hearing that we are in a place of transition. Literally, things have been completely shut down around us, and we are moving through a season that we have absolutely not ever known before. I don't think we have any question about that. I think if you asked anybody in the body of Christ what this is, they would say we are in a place of transition. 
It is, if you would, as if we have moved out of one room, and the way the Holy Spirit showed it to me was as if we were in a hallway. We've moved out of one room, and we are moving through the hallway of transition to the next location. The problem with transition is that sometimes, if we're not careful, if the transition is not clear, or if things begin to get cloudy or difficult in transition, we find ourselves at risk for getting stuck in the process of moving from one place to the other. We have been constantly hearing and seeking the Lord for work, right? When the pandemic happened, it hit, we were all clear about the fact that God has shut down things around us so that we could hear more clearly what it was he was trying to say to us. And as I began to seek the Lord for what he would have me to share this morning, ironically, um, I discovered that what the Lord began to talk to me about was the same thing he's been saying for quite some time. The interesting thing is that we went into the pandemic trying to hear what the Lord was saying, or in the pandemic, we found out we needed to hear what the Lord was saying. And if we are honest with ourselves, what we will discover is what he said to us is what he had already been saying. There is very little we heard, and, and, and I would assume it, but if I'm wrong, then forgive me. But I would say there's very little we heard in the midst of this transition that was radically different from what God was saying to us prior to the pandemic hitting. But what happened was things got shut down around us so that we would attend an ear to what the Lord had been trying to get us to hear all along. And so God began to bring clarity for us to the things that he had been trying to get us to hear and understand for some time, but we just would not stop and pay attention to what the Lord was saying. And so we began to hear things that sounded familiar to us, and we were able to declare, thus saith the Lord, during this season of, of transition. And we have been hearing and hearing and hearing from God. But what the Lord said to me, which took me back to what he had been saying to me for the last year and a half, is, Lois, what are you doing with what you're hearing? It is one thing to hear the voice of God and another thing to obey. And I think we have been so focused on hearing what God is saying that we have forgotten that to hear him is simply just that. If I don't choose to now move in obedience to what the Lord has required of me. Amen? And so the Lord reminded me that in all of the speaking and all of the hearing, and we've heard similar words, the truth of the matter is we already ready, are ready to declare that we have transitioned out of a season that we are never going to see again. There are some things that will never look like they looked prior to March 2020. There are some things that we, are, even if we get back to some semblance of something that is familiar, it will certainly not be normal. And what I come to share with you this morning is that we are in the middle of a season and we are not at the end. And the only way we're going to get to the end is if we make the decision not to get stuck in transition, but to keep moving forward. When we look at the texts that I read and the two scriptures that I was going to read in the New Testament, if you haven't already figured them out. One was the prodigal son, and he gets to this point where he comes to himself, and his statement is, I will arise and go to my father's house. Yeah. The other text was at the pool of Bethesda when the man who had been lame was laying by the pool, and Jesus comes, passes by, has a dialogue with the man about why he's still laying there, but ultimately he says to them, arise, take up your bed and walk. The two scriptures that we read in the Old Testament, the correlation between them is simply that as Joshua is standing now with the children of Israel at the river of Jordan at the time of the year when the river is highest and crossing the river is, is an unsurmountable challenge in the natural eye, the word of the Lord says, arise and go over. Elijah finds himself in the middle of a difficult season. He's running from the, the threat that's on his life, and he decides to go and hide, and the angel of the Lord comes and ministers to him and says, what? Arise. And so the word of the Lord came to me the other morning, and the Lord said, Lois, arise. Arise. 
The interesting thing about arise is that it speaks to a specific shift in posture. It is a moving from the position and the place that I am in into a position and a place of ascension. And the one thing that we have heard repeatedly in this pandemic is that there's an emerging generation. There is a church that is coming forth. It is a new church. It is not like anything we've seen before. God is setting a new paradigm and he's changing things. God is asking us to divorce ourselves from historical Nothing wrong with them, but just our traditional context and uh, avail ourselves to what it is that he wants to do with us now. And so that word is not confusing to us. We're clear about that. But what the Lord comes to say this morning is that now that you have heard me, you must arise. Yeah. It does us no good to identify ourselves as an emerging, or I'm not emerging, but an emerging generation if all we're going to do is recognize that we're emerging. When do you emerge? When do we move into? When do we respond to the things that God has been calling for us of us in this season? And the reality is this. We are in this place where we are looking for things to change before we move. When Elijah is lying there and he's, he's in this despondent place, he's looking at circumstances and conditions and he's given up because of what things look like. And the truth of the matter is, is that where we are right now, things look a little crazy. We thought we were on our way out and we're finding that we are literally not even at midstream in what we are considering this season of the pandemic. But the spirit of the Lord says this morning, arise and eat because you need strength for the rest of the journey. There is some place that God is taking us, but we must have a response where we are now if we're ever going to get there. If you don't keep moving in the middle of a transition, you never get to the new place. If you give up and stop in the middle of the journey, you never get to the end. The truth of the matter is, is that God is not finished. And while he has not caused this pandemic, he has certainly allowed it and he has made good use of it in the church and in the body of Christ, which is the body of Christ. But my point is that God has used this time to refocus us and to reconnect us. And the truth of the matter is, is if you've not been refocused and not reconnected by this point, then you are behind time in your own transition. Where we are now, God has said, I've spoken, you've heard me, now arise and go forward. What we do not realize is that we have an awful lot to do, and by we, I mean the body of Christ, with how fast the world moves through the space that we're in. And we are sitting by, waiting for the end to do what we've been called to do. I cannot tell you the number of times I hear, when this is over, I will. I can't wait till this is over so that I can, right? We've got things that God has shown us and given us, and we are busy planning for how we're going to execute them when this is over. And the reality is, this is not over. And it's not going to be over until we assume the proper posture and arise from where we are and move through this season of transition to the other side. As the body of Christ, as his, his feet, his hands, as his essence in the earth, we have the ability to expedite the transition. But we are looking for something or someone else to come and create the out for us so that we can then move into the things that we've heard the Lord say during this season. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe that there are some things that God shows us that are, in fact, for an appointed time, right? And he begins to show us sometimes futuristically where we're going. But even when God shows us where we're going, he gives us the now step in the immediate. The question is, what are we doing with what we've heard? Yeah. Our television screens, our Facebook lives, 
our Instagrams are all filled with what God is saying. And the question is, not anymore, what is he saying? What are you doing with what God has said? What are we doing with the Lord, has, with what he has already declared concerning us? Because the reality is to hear is not enough. We must be willing to both hear and obey. And we must do it in a time that allows us now to not get stuck in transition. The word transition in and of itself has to, in the essence of the word, is this idea of motion. You cannot transition sitting still. And so a pandemic shut down what was happening naturally for us, but spiritually... There was no reason why we needed to halt pace on what God has called or given us to do. The same God that released it to you is the same God that has the provision and the plan for how to execute it in the midst of a shutdown. Because the world has shut down. God has not been shut down. And as the body of Christ, the reality is we've not been shut down either unless we choose to get stuck in our transition. And so the word of the Lord comes this morning. I, I was looking at the text where Elijah goes and he hides. And I'm not suggesting that we're hiding at the body of Christ, but I do believe in as much as many of us have been excited about the season that God gave us to rest and recover and to hear, there are some of us that are getting tired and hopeless and despondent because things are not changing fast enough for us. Right? We are battling depression at an all-time high, and we had this hope and expectation that by the time the summer rolled in, things were going to be much better than they are now, and we're finding that that's not the case. And the Bible declares that hope deferred will make a heart sick. And so many of us are struggling with where we are right now because our heart has become sick because we've given up hope that there's an end to this. So let me announce it for you. The end is not yet. God is not finished with us, nor is he finished with what he is doing through this thing he has allowed to hit reset, not just on the church, but reset on the world. So we must decide whether or not we are going to sit at ease and wait for the transition to be over, or whether or not we will arise to the charge that God has given us and move things through. As the body of Christ, we sit with tremendous power and effectual change happens through the effectual prayer of the righteous, right? And I think, you, you know, it, it's so interesting because when the pandemic first hit, right, we were all... Um, Ooh, gung-ho and enthusiastic about getting in the face of God with an expectation that he was going to heal our land. And I think because that's taken a little bit longer than we've expected, I don't see the, the prayer vigils going like they were back in April, right? We're not responding to calls to pray like we were back in April. And it's not, um, you know, again, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So I think it's a natural response to begin to settle into a place. But the Lord this morning admonished me to remind us that this is just transition for us. Don't get comfortable in this. It is not the new norm, but arise and move forward. Because there is some place that God is trying to take us. The interesting thing about arising is that it requires that you engage yourself in the process. Right? He does not say, um, he does, he says arise. And I thought about Joshua as they were moving. And it's so interesting to me because in, in all of these instances, the Joshua and the children of Israel, when he says arise and go across, there was no supernatural opening or parting of the waters. He said, get up and move, right? The prodigal son is sitting in a pig pen, 
being treated like an animal until he comes to himself and decides that I must arise and go. Right? When Jesus heals the man or is dealing with the man at the side of the pool, he does not bend down, lay hands on him, restore strength to his leg, and then tell him to walk. He says to him, arise, take up your bed, and walk. The only place there is supernatural intervention is within the physical supernatural intervention is with Elijah as he is there resting and the angel continues to wake him up. But even when the angel wakes him up, the order or the instruction from the angel is you get up and eat. And so what I am saying to you is that I genuinely believe that what the Lord is asking us to do is to make a decision not to get stuck in this place that was only supposed to be a passageway from one season to the next. This is not a holding place. It's a hallway. It's a passageway. It's a, uh, how Archbishop has been calling it, a liminal space, right, door, transition. We're not supposed to get stuck here. We're only supposed to be here as we are moving to the next thing that God has for us. And so I admonish you this morning, you've heard the Lord. He's been speaking, and we've been hearing like never before. And I specifically feel like this word this morning is to some of us who have felt like because we cannot identify with the shift that is happening, that we are lost in transition. We're not just stuck. Stuck is one thing, but lost is because I can't identify with where we're going. I have enough understanding to know that I can't go back to what was, but because I'm having trouble identifying with what is ahead, I get lost. And this morning, I believe that the call of the Lord is to those who are feeling as if they might be lost in transition. The reality is that God is not done with us. God is not done with you. There is a destination that he's taking us to. But we must arise. We must choose to change our posture. The angel says to, um, to Elijah, and I think this is so profound when I think about where we are in this transition. Um, and the statement is, you need strength for the journey. Arise and eat because you need strength for the journey. Our journey is not over. The journey through transition is not over. So we really don't have the, dare I say, <laughs> the right to choose to die in this place. We don't have the right to choose to get stuck in this place. There is a journey that's ahead of us, but the grace of God is sufficient for the journey. And so I admonish you people of God this morning to take on new strength. The Lord has made himself available to us and he has released unto us this morning a new strength for the journey. But you must arise and eat to take on strength for the journey that is ahead. Do not allow your hope to be snatched in the middle of a season that you're having trouble identifying. Don't waste too much time identifying. Just keep moving through it. Yeah, hallelujah. Follow the voice of the Lord as he speaks and respond in obedience to the things that he gives us to do because we're moving. And I dare say that it is the will of the Lord that we come out on the other side with a glory that far exceeds the glory that we had when we went in. There's a latter glory, and it has a greater glory attached to it, but we cannot, we cannot, we cannot get stuck in transition. Arise, people of God, and keep moving forward this morning. Amen. Amen. I pray that the word of the Lord has blessed you on this morning. I find myself wanting to ask Terry for finished music. 
which is something I don't typically need. But thanks be unto God, we're in transition. Amen. We thank the Lord for his word this morning. We pray that it has ministered to your heart. People of God, God is not done with us. We are not in a place that is hopeless. We are not in a place without direction from the Lord. But we spend so much time hearing what are we doing with what we hear. The interesting thing about the way um, here is referenced in the scripture is that there are different words used at different times. And more often than not, and I, I specifically I'm thinking of the instance of Samuel when he says, speak Lord your servant hears, that word there is an action word. I hear you, God with the intent to do what it is that you are asking me to do. I venture to say that we ended up in a place where everything had to be shut down because we weren't taking the time to hear. But now that we have heard, there is a response that is being called for in this season to keep us moving forward to what God has for us. Arise and move forward. Change your posture this morning. This is not the time to give up. This is not the time for complacency. Hallelujah. It is in our weakest moments that his strength is made perfect. So take on strength, people of God, this morning. Arise and move forward. Father, we bless your name this morning for your word. We thank you, God, that you have given us yet another opportunity, oh God, to agree with where you are and what you are doing in our lives in this hour. And Father, I pray for those who are listening on this morning that you would awaken and stir them, oh God, to a place of response, God, to the word that you've delivered and the word that you've heard. Father, I pray this morning, God, that you would lift the despondent heart that has become discouraged by the current conditions. God, these conditions are not intended to stifle us. They are but a transition from one place to the next. And God, I pray this morning that you would supernaturally infuse us with a desire, God, to move into the things that you have given us to do. God, we're your people on this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that you have given us effectual power. And so we pray this morning, God, that as we arise and begin to respond in obedience, God, that you would help us to be the tools through which you are able to execute your will in the earth, God, and move us from where we are to where you are taking us. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that you would give us courage, Father, to do the things that you have called for and the things that we have seen and the things that you have shown us. God, I pray that you would give us the courage to respond at a level of obedience, God, that far exceeds anything that we have known heretofore. And God, I pray that even as you continue to speak, God, that we will continue to move. Arise. I hear the Lord say, arise on this morning and take on strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Arise this morning. The master has need of you. Arise. Hallelujah this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we arise. Hallelujah. God, we arise. Give us grace to move in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Would you lift your hands and worship him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How we bless your name. We bless your name. And Father, we thank you. I pray this morning that the word of the Lord has blessed your heart.
And I encourage those of you this morning who do not yet know Jesus to take this opportunity to invite him. Invite him into your life. I have not imagined, I cannot imagine, living in these days without the presence of the Lord. And so if you don't know him, it's as simple as inviting him in. He stands ready, he stands waiting to receive you on this morning. Simply acknowledge that you need him and that apart from him, you are but lost and broken. And the Bible says that if we confess with our heart and believe, confess, believe in our heart, confess with our mouth that he is Lord, then indeed we are saved. If you received the Lord this morning, please be sure to reach out to us, the information that is provided for you, and we will make connection with you to help you get started on your journey in him. Likewise, this morning, we invite those of you who have been streaming or watching us via stream, if you would like to give this morning your tithes, your offerings, to sow a seed unto the Lord. That information is likewise available to you on your screen. This is good ground. This is good ground, and I can tell you for certain that if you plant a seed in this ground, it does bring a harvest an abundant harvest to your life. So please, 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 sir, please, ma'am, do indeed so with us this morning. This is our first Sunday. And typically if we are, when we are together as the body of Christ, we tend to fellowship the Lord's body and his blood together on the first Sunday. And so I would ask those of you who are streaming with us virtually to grab your elements. Bread, juice, wine, if that is your um, forte. It's so interesting because um, God has such tremendous power. And what he does in our lives is so real. You know, there are places in the world where um, communion for them is rice and water, right? So it isn't as much about the elements in my hand as it is about the condition of my heart, right? The Bible said as often as you do this, you do show forth the Lord's death and his suffering. And he does, he has promised that he will do it again with us anew in his kingdom. And so, Father, we thank you this morning for your shed blood, for your body which was broken. Father, we thank you, O oh God, that through that sacrifice you have given us an eternal victory. God, and we this morning partake of your body and your blood. But God, even more importantly, we partake of your victory on this morning. God, we thank you that this is an eternal victory. It is not shaken by condition. It is not shaken by circumstance. It is an everlasting victory that causes us to always triumph in Christ Jesus. And so this morning, as we remember what you've done, we celebrate you this morning, God, and we thank you for your effectual working in our life day by day. God, we thank you that your blood continues daily to provide for us and to cover us, oh God, and to heal us and to sustain us. And Father, we pray that even as we partake of these elements now, that you will cause them to be a blessing to us, Father, even as we remember who you are and celebrate our communion with you. This is the Lord's body that was broken for you. Break and eat. Hallelujah. This is the Lord's blood that was shed for the remission of our sins. So grateful this morning that this blood never, ever, ever loses its power. 
it continues to reach, hallelujah, to the highest of mountains, right? And it flows to the lowest valleys. And when I think about what that means for us now, is it means that even in my lowest place, his blood still has the reaching power. It's redemptive. And it draws me back from my lowest place. Drink it. And give God praise, amen, for his finished work. Amen. We thank you again for joining us this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name.